Welcome back everyone to another exhibition match. This time we're gonna have a match between FFC Killer and Exploit. Not sure why their name does not have anything but the clan tag. But yes, that is supposed to be Killer. It's just not they're not visible. They're a very good assassin. Like any good assassin, you don't see them. So good job there, FFC Killer. Exploit, on the other hand, is perfectly visible. Also going for the Cloakbot Factory, ironically enough. Well, FFC Killer going for the Shieldbot Factory since they're very confident in their ability to sneak around. And both players going for kind of a typical start, getting a couple units up there just so that they can get a decent amount of scouting. Nothing major. A couple military units into a constructor. So I don't know how they're going to go for, for Reclaim because this map, it's super important to get your Reclaim going since it's like 1500 something. Yeah, it's even just in your half of the map, it's 2000 easy just around the main base. Reclaiming is key, is everything on this map. Killer going around the back lines, trying to set up some metal extractors. And Exploit, on the other hand, letting their conjure just be sneaky. And not do anything, because I don't know why. Oh, I see. Also going to the back lines, building metal extractors. Neither player going for the reclaim. I find that very surprising. We don't see that anywhere here, and that just doesn't make sense to me. Like I said, I've seen games be decided on this map because of Reclaim. I mean, luckily for Killer, Exploit's not going to be able to find anything over the southeast side. They were going... Killer was going there and then switched over because, like I said, Killer good at staying hidden. And they've been doing that well so far. I mean, they did just lose a bandit at the cost of two glaives. Good trade. Of course, the bandit needs to be repaired, but hey, still a good trade. But at this point, Killer just relying entirely on static economy as his exploit... And Exploit is a little bit further ahead. Very slightly, thanks to Overdrive, but still, it's enough. Just a tiny little bit of advantage. Mostly because they are ahead on... Actually, wait, how is that mostly ahead? Oh, because... I see. Killer going for the more effective position. Very slightly more effective. 0.7... or 0.5 to 2.5. As opposed to... What is this? 0.4 to 2.5? 0.2 to 2.5. Okay, fair enough. But that's still kind of wonky. They're not connected. So, no overdrive for Killer for the time being. So, exploit with the slight advantage there, but like I said, Reclaim on this map will win games. I have seen it many times. Like, the difference between reclaiming and not reclaiming. It is huge. Also, oh, yeah, actually. <laughs> uh, thanks, King Staff, for pointing that out there. That exploit, they've set up their base so that should you, oh wow, the selection boxes really demonstrate this. So if you ever see your selection boxes do this cool thing, I mean, the selection boxes in general, they can merge. It's a cool little feature they've always had. Normally you don't see it with wind generators when you select all of them, because normally people place the wind generators sufficiently distant from each other that one blowing up will not destroy the entire set. Because this is a bit of an issue for exploit that will be coming up in later in the game, most likely, is that any damage to one of these wind generators destroys the entire the entire power structure. Like, there's a giant chain reaction waiting to happen. So yeah, you never really want to see that merged selection box there. It looks cool. It's a neat, neat way the effect works. It's also a very bad sign. It means that something's gone terribly wrong with this with this with the construction ordering. But yeah, overall, again. Reclaim is big, but at this point it looks like Exploit still managing to get a bit of an advantage if no, for no other reason than they have an early caretaker and thus are using it to get some early power. So as far as static economy goes, if we just ignore the Reclaim, which actually this caretaker is not, so there's a bit of an advantage for FFC. Or for, there would be if they weren't accessing. But, again, taking the static economy on its own, there is a bit of a metal production, metal use disadvantage. I mean, Exploit's ahead. There's no way around it. Exploit is ahead. Very slightly, but they are ahead. Killer has managed to be a little more efficient when it comes to killing. Because that makes sense. That's in their name. However, Exploit, they have got a, I'd say, a much better sense of information. I mean, if you look at Exploit, like, look at Killer. What does Killer have? Wait, there we go. What does Killer know? They don't really know anything. Whereas on the other hand, Exploit knows the position of the factory, knows that there's a, back, a bunch of backline expansions, is destroying the backline expansions quite effectively. So there's that too. 
So overall, Killer is in a really good spot knowledge-wise. Sorry, Exploit's in a really good spot knowledge-wise. Killer's having a bit of a hard time. Still, though, Exploit, it's more a matter of time. And it's a matter of actually this engagement, too. The Rogues coming in will be able to get rid of the Reavers without too many issues. But, of course, there's still this giant army of Glaze in the back, so that's where the Bandits come in. But then if the Bandits are... I mean, if the Bandits end up coming close enough, the Reavers will take care of them. And also, Exploit coming in, leapfrogging the Reavers, and going for a really nice flank off these Glaives. Brilliantly done with the terrain. Those Glaives won't have much of a chance to survive, but at least it leaves the Reavers some room to get in. That was the best part about that. Open the window for the Reaver to get in, start making the Bandits have a hard time. That leaves some room for the Glaives to start taking out the Rogues, and overall push back Killer's forces. Still, though, Killer has a very strong army coming in here, but Exploit looks to be going for that same tactic again, sending the Glaze around the flank while getting the Reavers at the front line. There isn't quite the same synchronization as last time, however, not to mention no Rogues or Ronin to get rid of the Outlaw up front. The Reavers should be able to get rid of the Outlaw, and especially with the Glaze going up front with Killer again. What are they... Okay, Killer does know that's there. I would expect they would. But that's the thing, is that there is... A... Why is this here? Anyway, that's... <laughs> I seriously thought I turned that off. I'm gonna have to change that. Chat message did not show up in here. Ah. As I was saying, Exploit does have the military advantage coming in here. And actually, they managed to turn out the new attrition advantage as well. The Reavers, however, are gonna have a hard time seeing as there's nothing to stop the rogues. All the glaives did die, and most of the replacement forces are. Wait. There we go. Most of the replacement forces are just Reaver. It's Reaver, Ronin, and Glaive in even proportion, which I don't agree with. Especially not against this composition. However, I do agree with this backline assault. Getting rid of that picket, the Lotus will have no chance afterwards. This entire base is essentially doomed. The only problem for Exploit is that they might be getting too close to the buildings. Because remember, the, sh the explosion radius is still a thing. But the factory, very likely to go down regardless. And... 35? 30? Ooh. Ooh, it's being actively repaired as well. That is tricky. But it does not matter. Factory goes down, the Glaives die in the process, but that destroys all of FFC's, or all of Killer's production capacity. They still have a decent economy, they still have a way of rebuilding, but at the same time, they don't have actually that much. I mean, they have a couple works in the back, but that's about it. So, yeah, that's gonna be a bit of a pain. Actually, yeah, well, how many workers are there here? Yeah, just the two in the back lines and the constructor of the front. So, no factories are forthcoming for Killer at this point. I don't know what to say, but it's nothing good, I'm afraid. Killer is going to have a pretty much one shot here. They have the fact that the Reavers are being built, and there have been a lot of them, that is working in their favor. As long as the rogues don't die, they might be able to tear apart this entire wind generator complex we talked about earlier. And the rogues are inching forward on that, and that's going to be one of the first targets. In fact, looking at the overall way the targeting would work, yes, that is going to be the first target. So one rogue missile smacking into the wind generator, that is going to destroy Exploit's economy. Not that I think it matters at this point. There's still double the impact of everything on there. I mean, Exploit has... They have more money. They have more money in units. They have production facilities, which have not been rebuilt yet on Killer's side. And they also are building up the glaives they need to get rid of the rogues, and the rogues have not hit the wind generator. That wind generator is super important and it's not dead yet! This, oh, man. I mean, I don't know if Killer really has a chance. They haven't rebuilt a factory yet. They are building a shieldbot factory in the back lines. Makes sense. I mean, just rebuild what you had isn't necessarily the worst idea. It'll support the composition you have, but at the same time, question is, can it go forward enough to hit that wind generator? And looks like that might be the case. Killer's commander does have the... Okay, that particle beam, they have art repair as well, so they're able to get in and actually not take much damage. And there's very little in the way of opposition either. The Reavers are coming around the backside, but they were out of position as it's clear they were trying to go for an assault. It looked like Exelot was trying to get around get around the back lines over here, but at this point, the main story is that the main base might actually be traded. One good shot here. There's the wind generators. Okay, not quite a complete chain reaction, but still a position where chain reaction is very likely. And at the same time, that factory is about to go down. So this is dangerous. Killer could still manage to get through and win this game. Exploits, Reavers, again, they're way out of position. I'm not sure why they're all the way over there. But no matter what, that is Exploits base gone. The trade has occurred. Killer does have a rebuild on their own side. I mentioned the Shield Black Factory of the South. But also on the top, we have the gunship plant being built up for Exploit to try to essentially make up for the loss of their Cloaky Factory. I could see that working. 
again, Exploit had a stronger economy going into this, but they were also accessing a lot and didn't really have a whole lot to counter. Well, at the same time, the Shieldbot Factor is going to be up earlier, and if the gunship plant gets spotted first, well, then there's going to be half a dozen Vandals before the, anything comes out of there. So, at this point, I just don't see this working. I think, if, I think Killer... I think Killer's got this. Because bear, bear in mind, Exploit is going to be losing all this stuff here. They have nothing defending it. They have no units on the field whatsoever. Their only units are the Reavers that were out of position, which are now moving in, trying to do what they can to continue finishing off this base, but honestly, this base doesn't matter anymore. It's one metal extractor and a half dozen power structures. Who cares? The back line here, that's what matters to Killer. Because like I said, Killer's invisible. Exploit's never going to find them. Or if they do, I mean, they might. But at this point, Exploit's not looking in the right spot. So with that, I think I see these Reavers as being the last-ditch attempt. I mean, we saw a last attempt from Killer right now, and that worked. I mean, they managed to take Exploit's base, managed to take Exploit's commander, might be able to take out the gunship plant, too. That, not that it's building anything. At the same time, Killer's managed to rebuild a bit more safely, in a bit more hidden fashion. They have the rogues needed to get rid of the Reavers. There are no other forces to come in to try to stop that. And Exploit doesn't have anything to build... Wow. Exploit literally has these Reavers and that... This one Conjurer, and that's it. That is entirely everything in Exploit. Throws in the towel, knowing there's nothing they can do. Not a bad start, though. I mean, really, Exploit had that game. It was, it was theirs to lose. But Killer's Force came in here and did a lot of damage. I really like the way the Exploit was flanking around this near the mid-game. They just came around here and just tore everything apart. I loved it. The only downside is that it didn't end up actually having the momentum it needed. And I think in large part because they had a bunch of Reavers that were off to the side not doing anything. And those would have helped. I mean, I guess the Rogue's not hugely. But, you know, you pop them outside from the hills or whatever else. And then all of a sudden they're in range of the Rogues. Either it forces the Rogues back, which buys time, allowing you to make more Glaives. Or it kills the rogues, which means you win. My guess... Okay, so people are talking about the wind generators and the damage dealt. I'm guessing that one might have been a balance change recently. Let's check the damage. Oh, it's only 80 damage. They have 130 HP. Yeah, there must have been a change to the HP then. I haven't checked... I mean, as the comment that popped up in the bottom right corner of the screen suggested, I have done dev work on this game... I mean, most recently, I actually helped fix up some of the hockey stuff because there were issues with punctuation, which is fixed now. So that you can use punctuation for hockeys, for, like, grid keys, which I do because I'm crazy. But you... Oh, wait. What? Oh, right, this is an early version of the game. It's not going to show up. Right, right, right. The most recent version of the game, it will work. This version of the game, it wasn't working yet. Because, yeah, like I said, I like the hockeys. Anyway, so that is that for that game, but there is still one more. Orphelius and Hokamoka. Oh, I have two Orphelius games. You're in luck, Orphelius! I mean, Orphelius has been playing a lot, they've been streaming a lot, they've been doing their own thing as a, hey, let's get better at 0k mission, which has been pretty cool. They've been streaming about three or four times a week. Then so go check them out, too. Anyway, the next match will be them versus Hokamoko on Onyx Cauldron. That'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned, because I'm actually really interested in whether or not Okamoko goes for Amphib. It's the perfect map for Amphib, but Okamoko is also, like, they're an Amphib main. I love their Amphibs, but Amphibs are also kind of not as big of a thing as they used to be. Well, anyway, we'll get to that in a sec. <laughs> 